How's the folk going, folks? Great to be here. I uh, just want to tell you a bit about myself. I've lived a bit of a strange life. Uh, you know, like, uh, like not many people can genuinely say that when they were a kid, they caught their dad masturbate while he choked himself with a belt, you know, but uh, <laughs> guess you can. <laughs> My kids. <laughs> Yeah. I read, I read uh, that 25% of men suffer with uh, social anxiety when using public bathrooms and I'm one of them men and it's a fucking nightmare, you know. You can be out with your mates having a few drinks, you know, it's about six or seven drinks, you'll run to the bathroom, you'll run to the urinal, unzip your pants, take your cock out, you know. Everything is fine up to that point. But if another man wants to walk over and start using the urinal beside me, I don't know why, but for some reason I can never come. It's like the weirdest <laughs> Strange, strange, strange. Big, big fan, big fan of TV shows. My favorite TV show, House of the Dragon, is coming back. It's great. It's like Game of Thrones, but the incest is way more tasteful, you know? It's only cousins fucking, you can relate, you know? <laughs> no, but uh, in the last season, actually, at one point, uh, the king's best friend, his right hand man, he says to the king, like, in order to keep the bloodline in the family strong, that the princess should marry her two-year-old baby brother, which is fucking crazy. And the, and the king was like, like, what the fuck are you talking about, man? Absolutely not. This is the medieval time. It's not Manchester. Calm down with that fucking spirit, right? <laughs> good reference, yeah, good reference. <laughs> right. Tell by the accent, not around, from around there. But the funniest thing about the show is that, like, it's, 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 it's fantasy-based, you know? So there's, like, there's somebody who's, like, a half-man, half-crab, there's, there's blood magic, there's fire breeding dragons. But the strangest part was is that when some of the fans saw that one of the characters was a black man with blonde hair, they were like, it's a bit too much fantasy for me now. <laughs> Buying this now. My uh, parents separated when I was six years old. My mom and dad had six kids, he had six boys. But when he separated, he had seven more kids. That's 13 kids all together. But because of me and my five brothers, we were the four, six kids in the family. We always refer to ourselves as the original six, you know? Because not only is it a cool name, but it's also far more uplifting than the abandoned six, you know, doesn't it? It's a sting as much, you know? But uh, as the family got bigger, we all moved out at an early age, you know? So when I was 14, I was sent to live with my Uncle Christopher, and he was a fucking psychopath, you know? Like, he was always masturbating. Like, swear to God, like, why well, called my uncle masturbating so much that when I got home from school, I'd walk up the steps here, apparently as loud as I could, you know? Because I was hoping that if he hears me coming, I won't see him coming. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> oh my, uh, I've been living with my girlfriend now for about eight years. She's, she's great, but she's a very ditzy. Very ditzy woman, you know. For example, like two years ago, she was getting ready to go to the gym upstairs and she's getting her clothes on and she was walking towards the stairs, but she was looking at her phone and she fell down the goddamn stairs. Like, it was a fucking serious accident. And she got, like, a, she got in a lot of... Uh, a lot of issues, you know, medically. And, uh, yeah, it's like, really affected our relationship, like, especially our sex life, you know? Like, we've only had sex maybe four, maybe five times since you died. She's a great woman, though. She's a great woman. She's, she's beautiful as well, man. My girlfriend, she's... It's weird how good-looking she is. Like when I look in her face, I'm kind of dumbfounded. I don't know what it is. It's like I have a moment of honesty with myself. I say the most random thing. Like I remember a few weeks ago, I woke up in bed really early. I remember rolling over in bed and looking at my girlfriend's beautiful face. And I remember just saying to myself like that, man, this girl is definitely dead. <laughs> I'm, not a, I'm not a big fan of stereotypes, you know? And I hate the stereotypes that women put on gay men, you know? Like every woman wants a gay best friend because they think that, like, gay men want to do all the boring shit that their boyfriends don't want to do, you know? I think that's kind of fucked up, you know? Like, every woman thinks that there's a string attached to a gay man, and when you pull it, it says, let's go shopping! <laughs> you know? They're men. Let them hang out with men. But I figured out as well how easy it is to be considered gay. Like, if you want to be considered lesbian, you have to do lesbian shit. You have to, like, love a woman and date a woman. But in order to be considered gay, it's the fucking, it's the easiest thing in the world, you know? I'll give you an example. We do a lot of gigs in the North Ireland, right? And I overheard somebody say this, and I went home and I Googled it to see if it was true, and it's true. 
But apparently in the north of Ireland, if you open a bag of crisps upside down, you're a homosexual. <laughs> I think that's why Pringles are the number one selling crisp up there, you know? Like, it'd be one determined game on the fuck out of would you? <laughs> but I'm, uh, yeah, man, I'm, I'm gonna say something, just don't jump on me before I fucking finish, but I'm not a big fan of Pride Month. Pride Day, absolutely. All that fun enjoyment, condensing to one day, so much better, but a month of anything is too long. And we all love pianos, yeah? Piano day sounds delightful. Piano month sounds like a fucking nightmare, all right? Like just imagine it's like day 23 in the piano month, you're walking down the street, haven't slept in days, you know? Always bulging. If we hear chopsticks one more fucking time, you know, start hating Asian people out of spite, you know? Every time a Beethoven dog walks by, she's kicking in the face, you know? As I'm saying, so when things last a month, man, it's just, it's too much. But the worst people when it comes to celebrating things for a month, it has to be the people that celebrate their birthday months. They are the worst fucking people alive. If anybody here goes out with somebody that celebrates their birthday month, either you're going out with a narcissist or you're a pedophile, right? <laughs> It's only kids like birdies that fucking much, you know? They are the worst. Like, these are the kind of people that on 9-11, when they were watching the TV, they saw the planes go into the towers. They saw the people jump to their deaths. They saw the, the towers crumble and kill thousands of people. They turned the TV off and said, like, this is the most unbelievable thing I've, I've ever saw. I can't believe this just happened on my birthday. <laughs> Jam, I've uh, got very sick last year. I got, got pneumonia and I developed a thing called pleural effusion, which means I've got fluid in my lungs and it's painful, but it's more embarrassing than anything, you know, having fluid in your lungs, you know, because like no woman wants to have sex with a man that's drowning to death on land. You know, like, <laughs> super fucking embarrassing, you know. But I'm, uh, but I'm in the hospital a lot, I'm just gonna get, get this thing fucking sorted. And uh, remember a few weeks ago, I read this article. By Voice Magazine, you probably heard of them. They're kind of like an alternative media source, you know. And he wrote an article about how ISIS are making beheading videos for a modern audience, and it's a hundred percent true. I remember thinking about this a few years ago myself, you know, because me, uh, my brother, he sent me a beheading video on WhatsApp because that's how we bond, you know. And I remember uh, flicking it on, and the video starts off with just the desert, just gold sand, blue sky. Camera turns to the left and it stops on two men. There's one man standing up, dressed head to toe, all in black, face covered, he's holding a large hunting knife. To his right, there's a man on his knees in an orange jumpsuit. His name is Sean Malto. He worked for a German publication. He was covering the war in Syria. And the guy with the knife, he picks it up, he points at the camera, and he says, to the government of the West, you've bombed our lands, destroyed everything we own, killed our families, but our will to fight will always be here. He gets the knife and he cuts off Sean's head. It takes about 10 seconds. Fucking... Absolute brutality, you know. The knife is covered in blood. He picks it up, he points at the camera. He says, to the people of the West, we have a message for you. Please look, subscribe, share this video. Hit the top of the corner for more content. We will stay there. Right? <laughs> and uh, suffered a lot with depression going up, growing up. Uh, I was 17, I... Try to kill myself. Like everything else in my life, I failed at that too, you know? <laughs> but being a suicide survivor, you actually learn a lot of valuable lessons, you know? Everybody says that failing that life, like it's, like it's the worst thing ever, but failing that death is fucking 10 times worse. You know? It really hammers home the fact that you can't do fucking anything right, you know? But I'm, uh, I'm a big fan of sports. I love trans athletes, you know, because they're so dominant, you know? <laughs> Everybody's angry nowadays about oh they, they can't you can't take part in sports because they're because it's it's not competitive when you play against women. But it's like if you ever turn on a hundred meter sprint and it was just a bunch of white dudes, you'd be like, what the fuck is this shit? You know, like, these lads aren't taking steroids. I'm not fucking watching. You know, because in my opinion, like a trans athlete versus a female athlete, it's a lot like a black athlete versus a white athlete. You know, like they like they run fast, they jump higher, their dicks are bigger. It's the same fucking thing. You know. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I love uh, conspiracies, but I'm not. But I don't really like conspiracy theories, you know, because you always kind of like, you always ruin good conspiracies, you know. 
I had a mate that came over and he was like, do you see that they're building new houses, but they're not putting chimneys on it? I was like, fuck, no, I didn't know that. He said, yeah, do you know why? I said, no, maybe the, the government doesn't want people wanting solid fuel, so they just took the chimneys out of the house. <laughs> no, you don't have a chimney. How is Santa Claus going to get in? <laughs> War on Christmas, Google it, yeah? <laughs> but I remember reading this thing about uh, the cashless society as well. Like, that's like a, that's like a, like a genuine conspiracy, you know? And like, are, like, like, and it starts off making sense, you know, like car boot sales, you know, like laborers and all that stuff. Like, like, like how are you going to pay them? Then I got into kind of like some wacky shit, like tooth fairies, you know, like, like how are you, like, like how are you going to pay the tooth fairies? Going to get like an all for one gift voucher underneath your pillow? Like this is great. I could spend this in most shops, you know. And then I went into uh, sex work, you know, like how are you going to pay the whores, you know? You're not going to get like a. A mortgage with bank, but fucking rim job on your bank same day, you know. <laughs> but here this weird thing as well the other day about uh, sex work saying that like you know like like you can't call prostitutes whores anymore because it's offensive, disrespectful. And, like, like it doesn't make any sense to me because you couldn't have to like play that situation out, you know. Imagine you get a prostitute and you're walking back to the uh, to the van or the abandoned building, you know, you're making small talk. And you're like, so how long have you been a whore? So, what? How long have you been hard? That's don't call me that. That's disrespectful and demeaning. I was like, you know I'm going to piss on you, right? You know, that's... <laughs> Folks, that's my time. Thank you very much. Sorry about that. <laughs>